Abraham Lincoln wrote, In the profound words of Abraham Lincoln, I can see how it might be possible for a man to look down upon the earth and be an atheist, but I cannot conceive how he could look up into the heavens and say, There is no God. Let's take a moment to ponder that statement. The universe, a vast expanse of galaxies, stars, planets and celestial bodies, all operating in a harmonious ballet of cosmic synchrony. The sheer magnitude and beauty of it all is nothing short of awe-inspiring. The universe isn't just vast, it's finely tuned. The laws that govern the universe, the constants of nature, are set with such precision that even the slightest variation would make the existence of life as we know it impossible. Consider our home, the Earth. A planet perfectly situated in the Goldilocks zone, not too hot, not too cold, but just right for life to flourish. The Earth is a haven of biodiversity, from the towering redwoods to the microscopic bacteria. Every form of life is a testament to the intricate design and balance that sustains our world. Then, there is life itself, a complex orchestra of cells, tissues and organs, all working in unison to create the symphony of existence. The human brain, an intricate network of neurons firing electrical impulses, is capable of thought, emotion and creativity. How can one look at the complexity of life and not see a grand design? Science, in its quest for understanding, has uncovered the beauty and complexity of the universe. The more we learn, the more we realize how finely tuned the universe is. It's as if the universe has been designed not by chance, but by a grand designer. In the book of Genesis it says, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Just as the stars in the universe, each one of us is unique, a testament to the grand design of life. The universe in all its grandeur speaks volumes of a grand designer. So the next time you gaze up at the night sky, remember the words of Lincoln and consider the wonders of the universe. Let us delve into the Holy Scriptures, specifically Genesis 22:17. In this verse we find a promise made to Abraham, the patriarch of faith. God, in his infinite wisdom and power, pledges to surely bless Abraham and multiply his descendants as the stars of the heavens and as the sand on the seashore. God's promise here is not merely metaphorical or poetic. It's a tangible prophecy that has been fulfilled over time and continues to be fulfilled even today. Let's ponder on this for a moment. Consider the stars in the sky, an astronomical number so vast that we humans can't even begin to count them. Then think of the grains of sand on every beach, on every desert, an equally mind-boggling multitude. God promised Abraham that his descendants would be as numerous as these, a promise so grand and audacious that it defies human comprehension. Yet, as we look through the annals of history and observe the world today, we see the fulfillment of that promise. The descendants of Abraham, through his sons Isaac and Ishmael, have indeed become a great multitude, forming nations and influencing the course of human history in profound ways. This is a testament to the truth of God's word and the divine orchestration of events. The prophetic nature of the Bible further underscores the existence of God. The Bible isn't just a collection of ancient texts or moral guidelines. It's a living testament of God's interaction with humanity, filled with predictions that have come to pass and promises that have been fulfilled. This fulfilled promise made to Abraham in Genesis 22:17, and its fulfillment thousands of years later showcases the timeless nature of God's word. It serves as a stark reminder that God's promises are not bound by human limitations or the confines of time. When we look up at the night sky, let's remember Abraham's descendants as numerous as the stars. Let's remember God's promise and its fulfillment. And let's remember that these are not mere coincidences, but the workings of a divine, omnipotent entity, a testament to the existence of God. This fulfilled promise, thousands of years in the making, showcases the timeless nature of God's Word. Next, let us explore the comforting words found in Isaiah 49, 16. This verse, nestled in the writings of the prophet Isaiah, speaks volumes about the profound love and protection God provides. It reads, See, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. 
At first glance, this verse might seem like a beautiful piece of poetry, but look closer, delve deeper, and you'll find a reassurance of an omnipresent, loving God. The image of being inscribed on the palms of God's hands is a powerful one. It implies that we are constantly in His thoughts, forever within His sight. It's a symbol of His unwavering attention towards us, His creations, affirming that we are never forgotten or neglected. This message of God's love and protection extends beyond the individual. The latter part of the verse, Your walls are continually before me, refers to the walls of Jerusalem, a symbol of the collective people of God. This suggests that God's protective gaze is not only upon individuals, but also on societies, nations, and the world at large. This verse, among many others, provides compelling evidence for the existence of a loving God. It resonates with Abraham Lincoln's sentiment that looking up into the heavens and denying God's existence is inconceivable. Just as the vastness of the universe suggests a divine creator, the personalized assurance of love and protection in Isaiah 49, 16 points to a caring, attentive God. The Bible is filled with such affirmations, consistently reminding us of God's enduring presence. Each verse, each story, each message echoes the same sentiment that we are under the watchful eye of a loving God. So if you ever find yourself wondering if God is real, remember Isaiah 49, 16. Remember the promise of unwavering love, the assurance of protection, and the enduring presence of God. These words were written not just for Isaiah, but for all of us. The consistent reassurance of God's love throughout the Bible reminds us of His enduring presence. The Bible is not the only place we find evidence of God. Many individuals have experienced His presence in their lives. Let's delve into some personal testimonies of people who have felt the divine intervention in their lives. These stories, though unique, all share a common thread, an encounter with the divine, an experience of God. Consider the story of Jane, a woman who was once overwhelmed by the trials and tribulations of life. She felt like she was in a dark tunnel with no end in sight, but one day she felt a deep peace washing over her, a feeling she couldn't explain. She felt a strength she didn't know she had, enabling her to tackle her problems head on. Jane believes that this strength was none other than God's grace, helping her in her hour of need. Then there's the tale of Peter, a man who was once a skeptic, questioning the existence of God. However, during a life-threatening incident, Peter recalls feeling a powerful presence that guided him to safety. Following this experience, Peter could no longer deny the existence of a higher power, a divine entity who he believes saved him from danger. Now, let's think about Emily, a young woman who had been struggling with her faith. She was riddled with doubts, feeling distant from God. But during a solitary walk in nature, she witnessed a breathtaking sunset that made her feel deeply connected to the universe. Emily believes that this moment was God's way of showing her that he was there, always watching over her. And there's the story of Samuel, a man who was going through a particularly challenging phase in his life. He recalls one night when he felt an inexplicable sense of hope and optimism despite his circumstances. Samuel is convinced that this was God's way of reassuring him that he was with him even in the toughest times. Each of these stories paints a vivid picture of personal encounters with God, experiences that are deeply personal and profoundly transformational. These are not isolated incidents but shared experiences of millions of people around the world. They speak of an inexplicable peace, a sudden strength, a divine guidance, a connection to the universe, a sense of hope, all pointing towards the presence of a higher power. These personal experiences, unique yet unified, are not just stories. They are testimonies bearing witness to the presence of God in our lives. They attest to the reality of a divine entity who guides us, strengthens us, comforts us, and loves us. These experiences affirm the words of Abraham Lincoln, who once said, I can see how it might be possible for a man to look down upon the earth and be an atheist, but I cannot conceive how he could look up into the heavens and say there is no God. These personal experiences, unique yet unified, further affirm the reality of God. Another compelling evidence of God's existence is the universal moral law. 
This law isn't written in any constitutional statute book, yet it is recognized worldwide. It's a set of innate principles that guide human behavior, a moral compass that discerns right from wrong. These principles are not taught, they are inherent, present in every human being, regardless of culture, race or religion. Have you ever pondered why we as humans have a shared understanding of what is fundamentally good or evil? Why do we instinctively know that kindness is virtuous and cruelty is wicked? This universal moral law isn't a product of societal norms or legal systems, for they vary across cultures and civilizations. Yet the moral law remains constant, unchanging. This moral law transcends human intellect and societal constructs, indicating the existence of a moral lawgiver, a divine entity who instilled these principles within us. This is where the existence of God becomes evident. Indeed, the Bible, in Romans chapter 2, verse 15, tells us that God's laws are written in our hearts, our conscience also bearing witness. This verse is a clear affirmation of the universal moral law and its divine origins. Consider the complexity and the intricacy of this moral law. It's far beyond the scope of human wisdom or collective consciousness. It's a profound system that governs human behavior, maintains social order, and promotes virtues like love, kindness, and justice. Could such a complex and sophisticated system originate from randomness? Or is it more plausible that it is the work of an intelligent and purposeful designer? In essence, the moral law within us, our innate sense of right and wrong, our shared understanding of good and evil, they all point to a divine source. They are subtle yet powerful reminders of a creator who has intricately woven his moral standards into the fabric of our being. The universal moral law, deeply ingrained in every human, points to a divine lawgiver. This silent law, resonating within us, is a testament to God's existence, a beacon guiding us towards the divine truth. Despite countless hardships and trials, faith in God has proven to be resilient throughout history. It is a testament to the strength of the human spirit and, more importantly, to the reality of a higher power that has remained constant and unwavering in its support. Consider this. Faith has been put to the test time and again. From the early days of the Apostles, who faced persecution and martyrdom, to the countless believers in our present day who still face adversity for their beliefs, faith has not only survived but thrived. This resilience is not a mere coincidence. It is evidence of a divine presence that fuels the human spirit, that gives strength in the face of adversity and hope in times of despair. Throughout the centuries, faith has grown exponentially, spreading across continents, reaching the hearts of millions, it has withstood the test of time, surviving wars, plagues, and natural disasters. Despite the trials and tribulations, the number of believers has not dwindled, but rather increased. This growth against all odds is a testament to faith's resilience and supports the existence of God. When we look at the Bible, we see examples of this resilience. Abraham, willing to sacrifice his son Isaac in Genesis 22:17, was a testament to his unshakable faith. Despite the hardship, he remained faithful to God and his faith was rewarded. Similarly, in Isaiah 49, 16, God promises never to forget his people, a promise that has been proven true throughout history. These biblical examples echo the resilience of faith in our own lives, providing a mirror to our own experiences and reinforcing our belief in God. In conclusion, the resilience of faith, its growth, despite persecution and hardship, is an affirmation of God's existence. It is an indication of a divine hand at play, a guiding force that remains with us through the trials of life. The enduring faith of millions, against all odds, is a testament to the reality of God. It is a testament to the strength of the human spirit and to the divine presence that fuels this spirit, providing us with hope and strength in our darkest hours. From the magnificence of the universe to the resilience of faith, evidence of God's existence is abundant. Our journey today has taken us from the cosmic to the personal, from the grandeur of galaxies to the intricacies of the human heart. As Abraham Lincoln once said, it's conceivable that one might look down upon the earth and doubt the existence of a divine power. But when we lift our eyes to the heavens, the question becomes less about whether God exists and more about how we can deny such a possibility. We've explored the wonders of the universe 
the awe-inspiring vastness of space and time that dwarfs us, yet fills us with a sense of belonging. We've delved into the words of the Bible where promises made in Genesis and reiterated in Isaiah speak of a God who knows us intimately, who holds us in the palm of his hand. We've heard personal testimonies, stories of lives changed and hearts transformed, of a faith that lends strength in adversity and gives hope in despair. We've considered the moral law, that innate sense of right and wrong that guides our actions and shapes our societies. And we've reflected on the resilience of faith, enduring through centuries of change, undeterred by challenges and strengthened by trials. Each of these elements, in its own way, points us towards a divine creator. Yet the decision to believe is deeply personal. It is not a matter of cold, hard facts, but of personal experience, introspection and an open heart. So I encourage you to contemplate the evidence, to ask questions, to seek answers. Look at the world around you, at the stars above you, at the people beside you and within your own heart. As we gaze upon the heavens and delve into the depths of the human experience, we find that the evidence points towards a divine creator. This is an invitation to explore, question and discover the reality of God for yourself.